Okay, hi, Mr. Kwong here. Just going to record some of the questions for uh, block exam paper 2. I'll be going through questions 3, 4, and 5. Right, so let's start with question 3 first. Right, question 3 is over here. Okay, you have experiment that's conducted to investigate how the resistance per unit length of a wire. So if this new thing here, unit length of a wire RL, varies with the inverse square of its diameter 1 over d square of the same wire. Then you're given a graph this way. Right, so if you look at this equation here, right, you are asked to determine the resistivity of the wires material, right, so use figure 3.1, so this graph. So before I can do anything, right, let's just play around with, since we have resistivity, right, we know that we will probably need to use our equation, right, so we go with R equals to rho L over A first, let me adjust my mic a bit, right, so we go with R equals to rho L over A, this is a resistivity equation. And then you can see that oh this one here is r over l so let's make this r over l as well so we shift this across with r over l equals to rho times one over a all right so we're getting to something similar then this is d square here okay and because we know that area is equals to pi r square which is equals to pi d over two square which is equals to pi d square over four all right, I can throw this in. Okay, let me just write it here as well. Okay, let me make it bigger. All right, so how to put this in? So we go and sub R over L equals to rho, and then this is one over pi d square over four. Okay, it looks a bit complex, but if you rearrange this, we we'll get uh, we we'll get four rho over pi times 1 over d square okay so you look carefully now right we have a y equals mx plus c okay so this is y this is my gradient and then this is my uh, x-axis all right so the gradient will give you 4 rho over pi okay so let's just pick two points two nice points in the graph to find the gradient all right so we can go back to here and then let's pick nice points let's use this one here and then we use uh, probably this one here Alright, so I'm just going to do the working here to make use of space. Uh. Right, so we want to find our uh, gradient. Gradient is equals to, this is uh, 4.0 minus 2.0 divided by 3.5 minus 1.5. Remember the times 10 power 6. Okay. Then once you have that, right, and this whole thing here is equals to uh, 4 pi, 4 rho over pi. Okay, so you can work out how to find your rho instead. Okay, so for the uh, detailed answer, you can look at the unanswered key for it. All right, I'm not going to finish all the solving. Now. All right, this is just the math part from now. Okay, next one, we have this uh, y, this uh, IV graph of filament lamp. You're expected to then detail that voltage is increased either positively or negatively from zero. By referring to the lattice ion electron model, right? So this is the key word here, lattice ion electron model, right? Explain how the resistance varies as the voltage changes as shown. Okay, so you don't have to do the negative part, you just need to focus on maybe one section here. So you just need to focus on this portion here. Right, this portion here. Okay, some of you said that uh the resistance is actually decreasing as your potential difference is increased because you see that oh this value here is increasing. But remember the way to find your gradient, to find resistance, right, is that you pick, you, it's, not, it's not the shape, you basically look at, you look at, uh, you start from zero here, right, you draw to this point here, to each point here, you realize that, hey, this slope is getting more and more gentle, uh, this, this, this line is becoming more and more gentle, right, so it means your, your, your V is increasing at a faster rate than your current, okay, your potential difference is increasing at a faster rate than current. So if that's the case, right, your resistance, which is, remember, resistance is not the gradient, it's just R equals to V over I. Okay, so this is a, this is a ratio. So right now, your V is increasing at a faster rate than your I. Okay, so this is a case of your resistance increasing. Alright, what are things you need to talk about? Okay, for this one here, okay, the first point, okay, if you just draw a figure out here, right, let's just, let's just find space to draw this figure here. Okay. So when you, I'm just going to draw the simple circuit. Uh, just let's see what I can do. Okay, so let's say we have the circuit. This is our resistor. 
this is a filament lamp okay. this is your filament lamp okay it's connected to a variable power source all right so if i increase this one what happens is that okay remember inside here right you have a lot of your lattice ions okay i'm just going to draw them as like that okay so these are your lattice ions okay and then of course the electrons there electrons are going to use uh, blue color all right so maybe something like this okay so when you increase the increase your uh, potential difference right first thing first is that each of electrons here will have more energy okay as they go right they will start to collide more often let me just trace that you will collide more often with your positive ions all right okay so the rate of collision will increase okay as it increases right this causes as your more electrons collide with more or uh, collide more vigorously with each of the uh, lattice ions right each of them will start to vibrate a bit more all of them will start to vibrate more as you vi vibrate more right it causes the number of creations to increase okay so when that happens right it makes it harder for electron to go go through the space okay so what's ha happening here is that because your you start to you start to increase your potential difference first your electrons gain more energy they gain more energy they collide more often with your lattice ions the lattice ions start to vibrate faster when it vibrate faster right it will make it more difficult for your cut for your electrons to go through okay so then this will therefore increase your current uh, increase your resistance okay let me just quickly jot down the points you can refer to the notes over here so let's just jot it quickly uh. when you have pd on, uh, uh, when you have pd across filament increasing this leads to current increasing Current increase, right? Current increase, okay. Oh, sorry. Current increase. This leads to uh, more vigorous collisions between electron and lattice ions. All right then your lattice ions vibrate at high rate okay and collide more often with the electrons This scatters E minus more and slows down. Okay, so even though my remember, even though you're increasing potential difference, right, and increasing current, right, your current increases at a slow rate now. Okay, current increase at slower rate. That means now your R is increasing okay so there's no need to talk about temperature here a lot of you mentioned that because tem temperature increase right uh, therefore your resistance will also increase okay your, your, your current slow down but we have to talk about the actual lattice ions uh, vibrating causing the current causing the electrons to collect more reg reg regularly okay so this one is not easy to get the four, the four marks there lah. Okay, you can refer to the mark scheme for uh, a cleaner writing uh, not this ugly handwriting here okay next we shall look at question four question four is we have a light dependent resistor ldr with a maximum power rating of 0 0.75 watts okay oh, sorry 0 0.75 watts okay maximum power rating of 0 0.75 watts placed in parallel with a 400 ohm resistor and connected to 15 volt cell resistance resistance 5 ohms as shown in figure 4.1 when there's low light intensity, resistance is 2000 ohms. Show that the current through the LDR is 7 mA. So right now, this is behaving as a 2000 ohm uh, resistor. Okay, you can see that these two are in parallel. Okay, because your current will come up from here. It has either it can go here or come down through here. 
so these two are in parallel and then when they go through they will merge back together and then come back to here okay so then this 25 ohm is in series okay so i'm just going to write pp this is p and p parallel and this is in series okay so the first thing to do right i need to work out to find current right i know that this is a 2000 ohm resistor if i can work out the potential difference across this uh this end here right this these two ends here right, across the ldr i can work out the current okay because i know resistance okay so for that i need to use potential divider so what i do is that i will potential divider work directly on series uh, uh resistors right so i need to combine these two into a series resistor first into a one resistor that is in series with this 25 ohm okay so to do that we will find effective resistance okay uh let's write it down r effective across two branches okay this will be one over 400 plus one over 2000 inverse it and then if we do the working we'll get 333.33 three, three, three three ohms okay then we can find the pd across the two branches so v across the ldr which is equal to the pd across two branches it's just equals using potential divider it will be 333.33 three, three, three three over 333.33 three, three, three 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 plus plus not times uh, plus 25 multiply by the re the emf is 15 volts okay 15 volts okay then with that i will get uh 13.95 volts okay and once i have this then i can go and do i equals to v over r so this will be 13.95 over uh 2000 ohms so i get s roughly 7 milliampere 7 times 10 negative 3 ampere which is equal to 7.00 milliampere okay okay hence or otherwise determine the power dissipated in the ldr so for this i can just i can do i can do a few formulas i can do p equals to v square over r p equals to i square r equals to v times i for this v remember to use the potential difference across the ldr so write out in full for you this will be 13.95 square over 2000 equals to uh, 0 0.007 times 10 uh, times uh, sorry uh, uh, square times 2000 equals to 0 0.007 times 13.95 all of them should give you the same answer okay and the answer is uh, 0 0.097 watts all right okay next we have another scenario your ldr is exposed to very strong sunlight okay very strong sunlight and resistance falls to 80 ohms okay determine discuss whether the ldr will be damaged as a result of the uh sunlight exposure a lot of you made this mistake where you just say oh uh okay resistance dropped 80 ohm so you do p equals to i square r and you took the same current from beforehand so you took 0 0.007 multiply square multiply by 80 and then you got your answer to be oh less than less than the uh, maximum power rating of 0 0.75 watts okay so this is oh, less than 0 0.75 watts Okay, so you think it's safe okay but you forgot that when the resistance changes right the current will also change okay so you have to go back and basically repeat the same steps as what you have done over here all right so if we do it this way right you have to go back to here then we find we do the same thing again we do r effective equals to 1 over 80 now plus 1 over 400 inverse I get 66.67 ohms. Okay, then by find V across the LDR using potential divider concept. Okay, so this will be 66.67 divided by 66.67 uh, plus 25 times 15. I get 10.91 volts. 
Okay, once I have this, I can do P equals to. Don't need to find current. Now. I can just use B square over R here. B square over R. I'll get 10.91 square divided by 80. And I'll get 1.5 watts, which is more than 0 0.75 watts, which means our damage. Okay, so if you want to write a statement, you can say something, oh, the power dissipation is higher than the recommended. Hence, LDR will be damaged. Okay, why be damaged? Uh? Because remember, when you talk about power dissipation, uh, this means that your if it's 0, 0 0.75, it means that this LDR can safely transform 0 0.75 uh, joules of electric energy to other forms uh, in one second safety. Okay, if you have more than that, what happens is that uh, the if let's say right now this is 1.5, right? 0 0.75 is tran transformed safely to, to is dissipated safely, right? The remaining 0 0.75 joules per second or 0 0.75 watts, right? May cause the will cause the LDR to heat up. And when you heat up your your electrical com components, right? You will de definitely damage it. Uh. Okay, there's a limit to how much you can heat it up. Alright. Okay, so that's question four. Let's move on to question five. Question five is a DC circuit question. We have two resistors of resistance uh, 5,000 ohms and 8,000 ohms connected in series across a cell of EMF 10 volts and the resistance 30 ohms as shown below. Okay, so this is the setup here. All right, then we have an ideal voltmeter is connected across the 5,000 ohm resistor. Okay, so this is our circuit. Stay and explain the main characteristics of an ideal voltmeter. Okay, ideal voltmeter, ideal voltmeter, right? Ideal voltmeter's resistance should be should tend to infinity. Okay, why is this so? All right, if you have a very big resistance here, right, over here, right, what it means is that when your current comes to here, the current will not come through. Very 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 little current will actually go through your voltmeter. Everything will just go through this resistor. Remember, your current will want to go through the path of least resistance. The path with least less resistance, right? more current will go through it. So if I make this resistance effectively become very big, right? Most of the current, if not all, of, effectively all the current will come through here. Okay, so if you have, let's say for example, right, if you have some current going through here, let's say this is I1, and then I have only some current going through here, and that's how it goes through here, okay? By right, what I'm trying to do is that I want to find this reading here, right? This is basically to be effect to be correct, right? I need to make sure that uh, I am using V equals to I1 multiplied by 5000. Okay, that will give me the correct reading. But actually what you're getting here now, right now, right? The actual reading, right? Is equals to I2 times 5000. Okay, so you're actually getting a smaller reading than the correct one. Okay, so it's important for a voltmeter to have a very, 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 very large resistance, ten, uh, basically tending to infinity. La. Okay, so how big is big, right? You, it should be in terms of, it should be a few times bigger, at least uh, like a few magnitudes bigger than your other resistors in your circuit. So this one will be looking in terms of, like maybe in terms of 100 kilo ohms, etc. Okay, then ideal voltmeter is then replaced with a voltmeter that has a resistance of 5000 ohms. Okay, I'm going to redraw this circuit here. For you, so we have in the resistance 10 volt and 30, right? Okay, let's just 10 and 30, 5000, 5000. Okay, so right now, what's happening is that for this portion here, right? The circuit, this one, this is your original 5000, this is your 8000, and then go on here, this is your 10 volt, and this is your 30 volt. Okay, then right now, your voltmeter is behaving like another resistor of. 5000 ohms okay so what I try to do now is that you are basically you need to combine these two resistors and tap directly across them like that okay tap these two ends okay so you combine them first and once you combine them right this whole thing here your R effective here right okay so I once I combine them I'll get this now so let's again draw the same circuit okay once i combine this i get a single resistor and you can see that 5000 5000 uh, parallel right it gives you 2500 okay and then this is 8000 and then this is 30 right yeah. 
this is 30 and this is 10 volts 10 volts okay so now i can quickly work out what is my v across if what is this v here right okay, let's go as v out right okay so this v out here is equals to 2500 over using potential divider concept uh, 2500 plus 8000 plus 30 multiply by 10 okay then i should get my answer as 24 volts all right so this one is quite straightforward lah. okay the most important thing is how whether you can see that you need to combine your resistors like this okay and this once you combine them you basically tap the potential difference across the two ends all right so that's all for uh, be paper so please uh, do more revision for the next me exam or the me exam that's coming out at the end of term two Right, that's all. Thank you.